Happy Sunday, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with a brief weekend coronavirus update with a kind of a, a topic today. And the topic is how do we avoid, how do we not get COVID? Um, and I think that with all the news out there and everything else that's going on, it might be a good idea to go back to basics and um, talk a little bit about how do we protect ourselves and our families from catching COVID and then avoiding all those bad side effects that can happen long-term or directly related to the virus. And there's a reason I'm wearing my shirt. I don't know if you can read it. Science just like magic, but true. And, and we're gonna use science to kind of give these recommendations. You know, right now we are in the midst of a surge. We, we predicted this. I've been saying this was gonna happen since the summertime. These viruses, these pandemics tend to get worse in the wintertime. Why is that? Well, because the virus re you know, requires hosts to propagate. And how do you, how do you infect hosts? Well, it's a lot, a lot easier if you can get them to come together. And so wintertime, we go back inside, our proximity increases and our risks increase of getting close to somebody that, that's got it. Um, plus, there are other other illnesses that occur in the wintertime, flu and, and the like, that may reduce our resistance a little bit and maybe make us more susceptible. So the fact that we're having this sort of surge in cases in the U.S. and in Europe and everywhere else is not surprising. It's been predicted and it, it's, it, you know, so it's happening. It's going to get worse. What do we do to protect ourselves? Well, you know, again, we look to the science and, and you know, we've been dealing with this virus now in the U.S. since basically February. And you know, I think our first death was February 28th. And, you know, people, you know, there's politics have gotten into this about masks. People don't believe. I still have people that are messaging me that they don't, they don't know anybody that's got COVID. Really? I mean, does anybody out there really not know at least one person in your circle of people that you know that has had this virus? I mean, in my personal life, I know like 30 or 40 people unrelated to my medical practice. Um, I mean, I think it's it, it, it's out there, and you know, the fact of the matter is, we've got to sort of deal with it. Um, you know, look at the numbers; the, the numbers are concerning. If we continue at the rate of death that we have right now, come the end of February, we're going to be around three hundred to three hundred and fifty thousand deaths. Now, to put that into perspective, you know, in um, the U.S., heart disease kills six hundred and fifty thousand people every year. Cancer causes about 600,000 deaths. The number three killer in the US is accidental death and it's 160,000. And we're looking at, you know, 300 to 350,000 deaths in the US at the one year mark, not including any increase that we see over the winter time. So, you know, realize that this is a, a pretty significant thing. I mean, a lot of people have died from it and a lot of people are going to die from it. Right now, I think 38 or 39 states are showing rising cases, a few are, um, are sort of even, and only two have declining numbers. Um, we've set records in multiple states. Ten, set, ten states set records in numbers of cases yesterday. This, the, the U.S. has, a high, has the, had the highest number of new cases um, recently, uh, yesterday or, or the day before. Um, that's concerning. Hospitalizations, which is, you know, is an emergency doctor, is a, is a concern of mine, are skyrocketing in a lot of these places locally in North Carolina. You know, we had sort of dropped down to about 800 hospitalizations um, about four or five weeks ago. Now we're up to around 1,200. And my hospital's been full, full of COVID patients and full of everybody else. And all the surrounding hospitals are being are full. We're going to get overwhelmed pretty quickly because we don't have a lot of excess capacity. And we're still early. Like, this is still time of, the time of year that we would just start seeing an increase in volume in the emergency department um, in October. Get, and, and it would get much worse as the winter comes. Um, so what can we do to protect ourselves, to protect our families? Well, you know, the science shows us there's some really basic things that work. Hand washing, social distancing, masks. Those are all things. I don't care about your politics. Science doesn't care about politics and the virus doesn't care about politics. Those are the things that are going to keep you, keep you safe. There's no other way to prevent it. If you insist on going into a big crowd at, uh, and without a mask, do not be surprised if you or somebody you know gets COVID. And, you know, it's it's a little bit like um, the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. And if you've ever played that game where you can connect every actor to Kevin Bacon, like within seven steps. Well, you know, we have the, the seven degrees of, of COVID here. 
it's not oftentimes the first person that gets it that's the problem. The problem is who they expose and who those people expose. And I think you can look at that wedding in Maine that as of, I haven't seen the latest numbers, but last week I think there were 166 cases related to this wedding, this oversized wedding that they kind of broke all the rules at in Maine, resulted in 166 cases and seven deaths. Now, the important thing is those deaths, none of those people were at the wedding. You know, that wedding killed people that were not there, meaning someone got it at the wedding, they went home, they gave it to a spouse who then gave it to a grandparent or, or somebody else who was at risk and ended up dying from it. So it's not so much me getting it, it's who I might give it to that's at risk. And remember, it's the gift that keeps giving. I get it, I give it to two other people. You know, it keeps, we, we talked about the R naught, you know, early on, which is sort of that that number of, of people that every each infected person gives it to X number of people. Why are we worried a little bit more about this, this time of year than last winter? Because the virus is much more prevalent. So when you only had a, a little bit of virus scattered around and people were inside, it's less of an issue. When the virus is everybody, everywhere and people are going back inside and getting close together, then there's a much higher risk of infection and exposure. So masks, you know, those, those big heavy particles that are loaded with viruses, the mask block those. So you're wearing that mask primarily to protect others in case you happen to be, you know, have the virus and be asymptomatic or early symptomatic the distancing, those big particles don't fly very far. They kind of fall off and drop to the ground fast. So if I'm six feet away or so, it's gonna be hard for me to get exposed to these big, big particles that are loaded with millions of virus particles. Now we think that there is a chance of aerosol spread and that some of those aerosolized particles can go a little bit farther. But you know, by and large, you wear that mask, you keep distance, you wash your hands, you're doing the maximum amount that you can do to protect yourself. You know, therapies have not really advanced very far. You know, we've, we've tried lots of different things. And, you know, right now, what do we know? We know that IV dexamethasone is effective in people who are really sick. So if you're in the ICU and hypoxic, IV dexamethasone has been shown to reduce mortality significantly. There's a couple experimental drugs out there that have shown some, some potential efficacy, but they're experimental still. One of those being the um, antibody cocktail that President Trump got. Um, that may well be why he had such a, a benign course of it, given his risk factors, being an older gentleman who's overweight and you know um, he, he was at a higher risk, but he did pretty well. But he also got everything. You know, they gave him IV dexamethasone. They gave him rem, um, remdesivir. They gave him this antibody cocktail. I think they gave him um, zinc and a few other things. The one thing he didn't get, because it doesn't work, hydroxychloroquine, another study the other day, hydroxychloroquine doesn't work. They didn't even try it with him. And you know he was the one that was touting it. Regardless, we don't have another great uh, therapies. Remember that antibody cocktail that they gave him is not even available. It's not even available for emergency use. Um, I, my, I heard that that dose he got cost $100,000 and it was a complete experiment, you know? So that's not a common treatment. So. The other concern is that when people get COVID, what, you know, about a third of them end up having these long-term sim symptoms. Now, for some of those, it just may be mild anxiety, sleep problems, brain fog. We've seen a lot of that, treating a lot of that in my clinic. But some people have really significant problems, cardiac problems, long-term lung problems, um, long-term uh, issues with, with basically daily function. And we want to avoid that. So, you know, it's also a little bit like rolling the dice. If you get it, you don't know. Or you like you have some underlying problem that might result in a really bad case. We don't know. And so if we want to avoid the potential for a severe infection um, and avoid the risk of having sort of these longer term problems, what's the best thing to do? The best thing to do is to not get the virus. And to not get the virus, that requires us to be a little smart and do these basic things. Wash your hands, socially distance, wear your mask and be aware of your surroundings. You know, if you're in a place that's loaded with people in a bar or something and nobody's wearing their mask and everybody's yelling or you're in a close proximity um, to a bunch of people, that's a risk, that's a risky area. That's something that you should just say, you know, I'm gonna remove myself from this situation to lower my risk because I have a feeling we're gonna have a pretty rough winter coming up. And again, far better to avoid a problem than to have to deal with the consequences of the problem. So, you know, it's a beautiful day here. It's a little cool in North Carolina. I do want to tell everybody, you know, we are going to survive this. We've survived every other crisis we've ever gone through. Um, we just need to take a little bit of, of initiative on our own 
take care of ourselves, look after our families, look after, you know, be a good citizen, look after those around you, do these basic things. Nobody's trying to mess with your rights. What we're trying to do is try to navigate this crisis as whole as possible. We want to, you know, get as few people as possible really, really sick. Um, enjoy your Sunday. Take a deep breath. Look at the sunshine. If it's sunny where you're at, um, count our blessings. You know, we're here, we're breathing, we're healthy. Um, as usual, if you find these useful, follow me on uh, Facebook and Vitality Medical Wellness Institute and follow our, our subscribe to our YouTube channel. I am going to be on Doc Talk Live tomorrow. It's a Facebook show and we're going to be talking about um, uh, crazy COVID questions um, and I'll post a, a link to our uh, Facebook page as well. Um, I'll be back this week with more videos as well. Everybody stay safe. Do what I told you. We're going to get through this. See you later.